Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. We are here live at the Virginia Chantilly Studios at Kardec Radio. And we are very happy that uh, we are here today to talk about a topic that many listeners have been asking us about, social drinking. Social drinking and the spiritual medical effects of it. We're going to discuss this throughout the program, and we hope uh, you enjoy it. And if you still have questions, keep sending us your messages through Kardec Radio's email, kardecradio at gmail.com, and we'll be able to address them in future emails, if not today. Now, we would like to remind you that on, uh, you know, Kardec Radio only uh, reminds us about events that happen in the English-speaking language. So one of them, which is, I think, the one of the biggest ones in English language only, is the symposium that happens in the United States. This year, on April 23rd, in San Diego, California, we're going to um, uh, have the 10th U.S. Spiritist Symposium, the Transformative Power of Love, and you're invited to join in. There's a very symbolic registration fee, a $20 for a whole day event. And if you want to know why it's just that small fee to get into such an amazing event, you have to be there to understand the reasons why, because that's the philosophy of spiritism. And the United States Spiritist Council is organizing and sponsoring it. And in parallel to the activities, children and teenagers are also welcome. From six years of age to 16 years old, they're welcome to join in, and they will have their own activities under the same theme. It's not daycare. It's spiritual education for children while the adults are also having their own program. Okay? Just go to spiritissymposium.org and you're going to get to know more about the 10th U.S. Spiritist Symposium. Well, dear listener, you know it's a beautiful day and the spring is finally coming to some parts of the earth, which is fantastic. Uh, The cold weather is diluting itself in the rays of sunlight, which is beautiful. And, you know, one of the things that happen the most when we get a better weather is drinking, social drinking. Have you thought about the possibility of having a get-together, friends, dinner without alcohol? Some people, yes, like myself, I don't drink. And that's fine. It's great. I still feel fantastic. Uh, But for majority of people on the earth, it's almost like impossible to think that we're going to have a dinner or lunch and uh, a social occasion event without alcohol. Is it possible? Is it not? Should we stop drinking, even social drinking? Well, today we're going to address this. It's not a radical view, it's just the spiritist view on it. It doesn't prohibit anything, but it clarifies and elucidates several questions that were asked to us by email at Kardec Radio. And we thank everyone who sent their emails asking us to address this very important question right before we begin springtime, when people are going to maximize their time with other people, which is wonderful. But what should we do? Should we drink? Should we not drink? Well, to kickstart our conversation here, uh, we're going to have a a small break. And right after this break, I'll be with you discussing this very topic and the spiritist view and also the medical view on it. Okay? So right after this break. We will return to our program after these messages. Books of Andre Louise Through the hands of the most prolific medium of all times, 
Chico Javier. The spirit doctor, Andre Luiz, wrote a series of books that unveil the mechanisms of life and life after life. From the best-selling novel, No Solar, Our Home, to And Life Goes On, the reader will find illumination for a fulfilled life on Earth as well as immortal happiness. Check the many titles available at the international distributor, EDI, CEI of America. Their website is www.edicceiofamerica.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Spiritist Network. Your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos. www. SpiritistNetwork.com Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Traveling to another country? Immigrating elsewhere? Prepare yourself by reading the book Among Brothers of Other Lands in which several loving and wise spirits wrote through the hands of Chico Xavier and Waldo Vieira telling all of us the tips and hints of a successful transition to a new land. Buy your copy today at www.edicceiofamerica.com Do you want spiritist books for your children? At Edisei of America, you'll find a collection of them from the best-selling book, Our Father, in which the spirit May May, through Chico Xavier, brought countless poems, stories, and folk tales based on the Lord's Prayer to the beautiful and educational collection by the author Eda Yusson Salis on Back to School and many others. Buy your copy today at www.edisseiofamerica.com. And now we return to our program. Yes, dear listener, we're here this morning, uh, which is almost springtime uh, for some of us on the earth. And uh, it's about the time in which more people than ever, you know, resume their social life at a more intensified pace, getting together, dinners and lunches, picnics, it's traveling. And in the midst of all of it, there's always alcohol. Is that a problem? Is social drinking a problem? Many people tell us, you know, it's not a problem at all. Drinking, uh, you know, just a glass, it's, I don't get drunk. I don't have problems in my life, etc. What is the spiritist take on it? What is the medical view on it? Let me tell you a little bit about statistics by the United States Department of Health and Human Services. Let's tell about, you know, how things are going by. So they say it's not only that young people are drinking, for example, but young people are at higher risk for alcohol-related problems. Research consistently shows that people tend to drink the heaviest in their late teens and early mid-20s. Young adults are especially likely to binge drink and to drink heavily, okay? And 46% of young adults engaged in drinking that exceeded the recommended daily limits at least once in the past year, and 14% had an average consumption that exceeded the recommended weekly limits. Well, such risky drinking often leads to tragic consequences, most notably alcohol-related traffic fatalities, 32% of drivers ages 16 to 20 who died in traffic crashes in 2003 had measured alcohol in their blood. 51% of drivers aging 21 to 24 who died tested positive for alcohol. Clearly, then they say young adult drinkers pose a serious public health threat, putting themselves and others at risk. So we're talking about a social... A social consequence of drinking and it all begins with social drinking it all begins with one glass and then it goes up and up and the challenges of you know drinking uh, together 
especially when you're young. So we also need to remember that when we drink alcohol, something is happening to the physical body. Research shows clearly that uh, alcohol can have a critical effect in the maturing brain. And, you know, according to neuroscience, we uh, leave adolescence by the age of 25. So it's a very, a truly maturing brain that is going to be impacted by the effects of alcohol. It um, dehydrates cells, basically. And some people say, oh, alcohol may be good for the heart, but it's terrible for the liver, terrible for the digestive system as a whole, it's not good, and you don't need uh, a whole bottle to actually dehydrate cells in your body and uh, to create side effects and problems in several organs of the body. So, of course, the consistent drinking has tragic effects, but the social drinking is just one step before we actually get to the critical drinking, okay? Many people may be concerned and, and asking whether this is really of a, a, a reality, but let me tell you something here. There is a, a doctor in uh, the United States, Dr. George Valiant, a psychiatrist, um, an American psychiatrist, psychiatrist, psychiatrist he wrote a book and i'm going to summarize here a few take home messages from what he thinks alcohol alcoholism can do to us let's let's define it whenever we drink alcohol and we feel like if we don't drink it we don't feel the same it's a way of being alcoholic Social drinkers, people who cannot be in a party, cannot be in a social gathering without alcohol, they are alcoholics, even if they don't get drunk. Yes, it is true. You're an alcoholic in spite of the fact you may not get drunk. It's not about the quantity. It's about your dependency on it. If any of us depend on alcohol drinking, either a glass or several bottles. But if we depend on it to have a meal, to be feeling good about ourselves, to feel good about ourselves, to be in a social gathering, we're alcoholics. Oh, no, Vanessa. Yes, we are. That's how the definition goes by. And as Dr. Valian, George Valian says... Alcohol is a problem of tragic dimensions, and one the first thing that it destroys is families. Uh, half of the children that were, uh, as, as he says as a psychiatrist, he says half of all the children who are in psychiatric services come from alcoholic families, and a great part of them were abused by adults who drink alcohol alcohol is con alcoholic uh, alcoholism is considered a disorder a mental disorder and the brain loses its great capacity of discerning when you drink alcohol and the other thing as he says it creates disturbances of personality, okay? And uh, he says, the greatest difference between alcoholism and other drug addictions is just a type of drug. But alcohol is a drug, legal, but it is a drug. It's a, 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 a huge social problem, as he says. And it creates several traffic problems and, you know, things that we just talked about by the, 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 the United States government, okay? 
in the families, it's one of the things that really bring people apart. And people need medical, psychological, and we would say spiritual treatment when they are in the pathway of alcoholism. All right? So it's very important for us to understand that the consequences of alcoholism are serious. Physically, it creates uh, liver disease, several different types of cancer, okay? Mentally speaking, it creates, it, it, it makes you lose concentration and memory. Neurologically speaking, it has, it harms your motor coordination. And psychologically, it can lead you to depression. Socially speaking, we can't forget that a great part of homicides are, you know, happening in between the use of alcohol. People usually have alcohol before they commit certain crimes. Family-wise, you know, we can't forget, where do people learn to drink? At home. Statistics say that 80% of children the, in, who later will drink as young adults and adults, they learn to drink at home. They learn to drink at home. All right? I know it's a tough, it's a very tough um, topic to talk about because majority of people on the earth drink alcohol, socially speaking. They don't like that we talk about it. And I know even spiritists, in spite of all the teachings, probably they haven't read enough or studied enough, they still claim that it's okay to drink a glass or two. Today, right now actually, I'm going to read to you the true account of a spirit named Joaquin Diaz who came through the medium Chico Xavier and he spoke. He didn't write this message. He spoke through Chico Xavier and it was recorded by a man named Arnaldo Rocha and then it was published in a book named... Uh, Voices do Grande Além, um, Voices of the Great Beyond, which is not in English yet. Uh, no, so many books, it's okay. It's still in Portuguese, but I'm telling you, this one is coming up in the Spiritist magazine and uh, in this April, and uh, it also uh, soon shall be in this book in uh, English. The title of the message is The Alcoholic. And it begins like this. Our group was touchingly visited by Joaquin Diaz, a poor suffering spirit that brought us the painful account of his experience from which we collected ample material for study and meditation. And here comes the message by Joaquin Diaz to all of us today. And let us pay attention to this message as it provides Lots of great um, information. Alcoholic. What other word is there on earth that brings in itself so much potential for crime? The alcoholic is not only destroying himself. He's a dangerous instrument of darkness. An open bridge to devastating forces of abysmal mind. The fire that causes isolation desolation appears in a spark alcoholism that causes misery starts in a sip little by little it becomes fire in devouring flames from cup to cup addiction reaches delinquency today shredded soul once a man i recognize that yesterday my tragedy started this way an innocent aperitif, drinking, some time for fun, a festive night. I was happy, a hard-working man, living with my parents, my wife, and a little son. On one occasion, however, I had the misfortune to try a few steps of the terrible poison 
disguised in elegant drink. I was trying to scare away a little problems of life. Since then, I turned into a pestilential zone of vultures of cruelty. Old, discarnate enemies of our family made me their interpreter. In a short while, I left work. I avoided hygiene and rotted my character, trading the haven of my home for the for unfortunate tavern. Drinking for myself and for all the vicious entities that harassed us at home, I falsified documents, killing my father with improper medication after throwing him in extreme ruin. Later, I became an unconscious beast and spanked my mother, imposing the illness that carried her to the grave. After some time, I forced my wife to prostitution to extort her money, killing her in a night of horror, making believe that she poisoned herself by her own hands. And I transformed my son in a young brigand and a sot, eliminated early by the police. Social reprobate, I merely reaped what I sowed. Often, in lucid moments, my conscience admonished me, there is still time, start over, start over. However, I was a loser surrounded by the shadows of those who, as much as I, consecrated themselves when incarnated to crime and addiction. These shadows surrounded me hasty, screaming, irresistible. Drink and forget. Drink, Joachim. And I drank, eager to forget myself, until the acute delirium besieged me to a palate of bitterness and poverty. Fever, sickness, and madness consumed my flesh, but I did not realize the visitation of death because I was drawn at once to the mob of criminals that I was fond of before. I suffered their pressure. I assimilated their madness. And with them, I tried again to get drunk. The bar was my world, with irresponsible dementia because of my way of being. Poor me, however, it came the moment when I could no longer lure my thirst. Dissatisfaction raged me inside. My lips were not able to touch, even lightly, a drop of the tempting liquid. Deploring the inexplicable inhibition that aggravated my sufferings, I pulled away from the companion's to hide the misfortune that I was object. I walked aimlessly, aimlessly, distressed and almost mad, until I found myself prostrated in a thorny bed of dry land. Relentless thirst overcame me. I cried for help in vain, envying the worms underground. No words could describe the grief with which I begged having one drop of water that would halt the hallucination of my taste buds. My torture went beyond all human expression. I was nothing but a blaze confined in myself. Then the expiatory mirages began. I saw myself in a cool, quiet night, looking for the dew, that fell from heaven to quench my thirst, ultimately seeking the fruits of the heavenly elixir. They were not in my eyes but tears of my mother, whose lament reached me in dismay. Don't hit me, my son. Don't hit me, my son. Returned to the flagellation, I found myself in the refreshing rain, but trying to absorb it, I recognized the tears of my father, whose last words imposed my dismay and shame. My son, why did you ruin me like that? Threw myself to the ground, plunging my being in the polluted stream that time thickened, 
hoping to relieve that terrible thirst. But in the same stream of mud, I only found the tears from my wife, mixing with painful recriminations lashing my consciousness. Why did you throw me in the mud? Why did you kill me, ruffian? Again, returning to the desert that welcomed me, soon having vision of crystal clear water fountains, gone mad with thirst, I stuck my mouth to the spring, which was covered into a cup of burning bitter taste, which overflowed the tears from my son, shouting in despair, My father, my father, what have you made of me? Everywhere, nothing but tears. I dragged through the dreadful ways of painful pilgrimage as a cursed spirit that addiction metamorphosed into venomous reptile. I longed for water to relieve my torment, but only found tears. Mourning my father, my mother, my son, soon to pursue the rel- pursue myself relentlessly with the soul stoked by untranslatable remorse. I suffered amazing trials until fraternal hands brought me to the blessing of prayer. Pious nurses of spiritual life and messengers of divine goodness through the talent of prayer quieted me the thirst offering me pure water. The strange martyrdom was relieved although my conscience accuses me. I'm now supported by those who inspire you. I then offer you the sad example of my particular case as a warning to those who start from a glass to another glass. The innocent drink during fun moments or festive evenings descending unprepared for imbalance and death and alerting you with grief turning to words I beseech you to the alms of friendly thoughts that I return to myself in the rugged journey of my own restoration. Joaquin Diaz. Dear listener, this is the message that was brought in by the speaking mediumship of Chico Xavier. Very unique because he used to write his writing mediumship. This is the spirit that talked through Chico Xavier was recorded. If you know Portuguese, there it was published in a DVD. You can listen to Chico Xavier's own voice, Joaquin Diaz's voice, on top of Chico Xavier's voice, talking this very message and telling us that social drinking can lead to tragedy. If you think you are the exception, we're telling you, no one is exception to the single laws of life. He's telling us quite clearly, like as clear as gravity. Gravity exists, and if we attempt to be an exception, we'll fall and hurt ourselves or others. There is no way to ex- exempt ourselves from the application of the laws of life. Joaquin said quite clearly, he was a happy man. He thought so. He had a good life, good family. But you know, everybody has problems because we are on a pl- in a planet that in, in which we're supposed to grow through the challenges of life. And it's very interesting because Joaquin Diaz says that the family of his had spiritual enemies. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? And why do we have discarnate enemies? Because in previous lives, we acquired them. That's as simple as that. And you know, to make an enemy, enemy, you don't need much. You don't need to kill them to make them your enemies. Sometimes just saying the truth. Sometimes if we just, uh, you know, um, make them aware of imperfections, they become our enemies. Or because they are envious of us or jealous, they become our enemies. What have we done to them? Nothing. But they become our enemies. That's how it is. That's how they feel. Isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. And I say it's interesting because 
we often think we have nothing to do with that reality. We often think it's never going to happen to us. And that's when Joaquin Diaz in this message through Chico Xavier tells us quite clearly, from being a happy family man to social, social drinking and becoming an alcoholic and an alcoholic that became a vassal of tragedy for himself and his own family. Do we know ourselves enough to say we are shielded from such problems? No. We are not. We don't know ourselves enough. So what should we do? Well, let me give yourself a break. Think about it. When I come back, I'll share with you more on the spiritual take on alcoholism prevention and also how we're going to remedy it right after this break. We will return return to our program program after these messages. Want to learn more about the ins and outs of mediumship? The book In the Realms of Mediumship by the spirit doctor Andre Luiz through the medium Chico Xavier analyzes the various aspects of mediumistic communication and mediumship. He also praises the efforts of mediums who are faithful to the spiritual mandate they received before they reincarnated, warning them about the risks of badly practiced exchanges between the two worlds. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Study Spiritism online at eSpiritism. eSpiritism is an online tool to promote the study and practice of Spiritism while contributing to the preparation of Spiritist practitioners. For full access to courses, go to www.e-spiritism.org. If you missed out on any previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Emmanuel's Novels The reputable mentor, Emmanuel, wrote a five-book series of spiritist novels that can truly transform your life. Starting with 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel delights our minds with the true account of characters that are so similar to each of us. Discover yourself in Emmanuel's novels and live better. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. And now we return to our program. We're talking about social drinking. Many listeners have asked us um, what are the spiritual take, the spiritual take on it. And several books that were psychographed talk about it. Uh, Dre Lewis in the book No Solar Our Home, which became a movie, talks about how social drinking made him also... Uh, an indirect suicide. And what is the concept of indirect suicide? Okay, when we do social drinking, we are, uh, some cells get to die because they are dehydrated. You know, alcohol is a drug. It doesn't do any good to the body. You know, there of course, there's a whole industry trying to, you know, Cell that it's good for the heart, but it's terrible for every other organ in the body. So, sorry, it doesn't help. You know, it's so silly to believe 
that is good for one organ. And you know, what is good for an organ? It's not the alcohol in itself. It's just a substance in wine. So you can buy this substance. It's already, you know, separated from alcohol. And you don't need to go through the steps of alcohol drinking. It's Spiritism doesn't prohibit anything. It just explains. And it's up to us to do what we want to do, but take consequences. All right? As we said before the break, the case of Joaquin Diaz from one small glass to becoming an alcoholic, dependent on it, and then later a family tragedy. We know statistics tell us that lots of homicides, suicides, is filled with alcoholic problems as well. All right? traffic issues as well. So we're talking about a social problem. We're not talking about an individual's issue. If we read books such as No Solar, Sex and Destiny, we're going to learn about this concept. Social drinking being indirect suicide. Whenever we do anything that cuts our lives shorter by seconds, minutes, years, or totally, it's suicide. Direct suicide is when we cut our lives short at once. Indirect suicide is when we cut our lives short little by little. Smoking, drinking, other types of drug addictions, also having emotional imbalances, hatred, uh, sex addictions, uh, etc. So, it's a problem. Oh, Vanessa, but what if I drink one glass of wine at dinner? Is that a problem? Yes, it is. But I don't get drunk. It doesn't matter. You're not the same because alcohol is a drug. Psychologically, physiologically, your body changed. There is some form of altered consciousness, state of consciousness, and... And on top of it all, what happens? We may make decisions that may change our lives forever. If you depend on that one single glass, when you are with friends or by yourself, you are an alcoholic. Alcoholics are not those who drink alcohol to, alcohol to get drunk. Alcoholics are those who depend on alcohol for whatever case scenario. If you don't know how to be in a wedding a ceremony, at uh, um, you know dinner, lunch, social gathering without drinking, you're an alcoholic. And you may be asking, what do I do? I'm going to tell you in a minute. First is awareness. What is happening to you also spiritually? You're not alone. Read books, Missionaries of the Light, uh, or... Um, Workers of the Life Eternal, and uh, uh, in the realm of mediumship, also Sex and Destiny, and you're going to see how you're never alone when you're also drinking. We're never alone ever. But when we're drinking, the ones who are with us are not happy spirits. They're vampire spirits. They're spirits who are sucking our energies because they also need to drink. And that's why many people start saying, I'm going to drink one glass. And then 10 bottles. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but sometimes that's the real case. In the book Sex and Destiny, there is a man named Claudio. And he gets into his home after work. And the spirit who is friends of his, he doesn't know. But a friend of his from previous life is there waiting for him. He likes drinking too. Claudio sits on his couch And soon after, this spirit comes to his ears and says, Drink, my dear. I want to drink. Touching his shoulders. Claudio was reading his newspaper. He didn't listen to anything. He didn't hear words in particular. But he felt something. And the spirit started repeating to him several times, as if he were hypnotizing Claudio. Drink. My dear, I want to drink. Soon after, Claudio stood up, walked to his own bar, started, you know, pouring whiskey on his glass, 
drinking. And then a second spirit came along and started saying, wow, not one for me. And that's when he stood up and got another glass and started drinking, etc. So here we have the spiritual understanding of alcoholic drinking. Social drinking for Claudio, just social. I mean, I'm just there, it's just a glass, nothing more. I'm not going to get drunk. But you know, when you keep reading the book, you see that in that drinking, this very symbolic drinking, this uh, innocent drinking, he changes his state of mind. He has a daughter. And you know what happens next? Believe it or not, he wants to se- to have sex with his own daughter. Read the book, and you'll see the rest of the story. It's tragic. Tragic. But he's never alone. He was not alone. Claudio was not drinking alone. When you drink, you are never alone. Whenever we do anything, we're never alone. And drinking is also something that makes us be surrounded by spirits that are simple vampire spirits, very dark entities. They are not bad. They are just like us. People who are willing to, you know, stay stuck in this heavy uh, density of the earth. So, dear listener, don't attempt to... um, you know, think that you'll be an exception to the rules of life. That's how it happens. That's just how it is. Which means the spirits that are surrounding us when we're drinking are never happy. That's why it's very risky for young people, individuals. It's riskier. Spiritism does not prohibit, but it warns us. If you go there, be prepared. The consequences may be dramatic. Dramatic. So prevention, don't go there. Rest assured that alcohol is a drug. Legal, but it's a drug. Drug is a drug. Creates dependency when you least expect From alcohol to other drugs is just a step away. And if you have children, be aware that you are responsible for what they are learning from you. If you're seated at a table and you have a glass of beer or wine and you're teaching without words to your children that that is okay, you'll be co-responsible for the pathway they take later in life. Oh, but I never, I always told them not to drink, but you showed them that you drink. So, you know, I, I, my husband and I, we always, you know, talk about it. Like, if you don't want your kid to do something, simply don't do it. That's the best message. Just don't do it. You know, it's funny because our example is so strong. For example, Carlos, my husband, he sits by the stairs when he wants to put his shoes on. And our two-year-old daughter, Virginia, she watches him doing this every day. So the other day, she was going up the stairs, and I asked her, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to um, put my shoes on. Uh, On the stairs? And she said, yes, like daddy. There you go. He never said to her, that's the way you do it. That's the way I do it, so you do the same. She sees it, picks up, starts doing it. The same for all of us. The same for all of us. Are we spiritually corresponsible for the message we're sending to everyone around when we're drinking? If we are a boss at a company, how many people are... I, I've experienced it myself in several business meetings or uh, business dinners when everybody was drinking and it felt awkward that I didn't drink. I didn't preach anybody against drinking. But, you know, it's my choice. But people look at you like 
you're strange because you don't, I don't care. In the long run of life, I don't care. I really don't care. Because it's my life, my health. It's your life, your health. It's up to you. If you want to drink, be my guest. I'm not going to drink. And I'm not going to tell people, you know, this, that, and the other, because they don't want to hear the spiritual things on this. I'm just going to say, you know, I don't drink. People should respect. People have to respect. And not to bully you because you don't drink. You are not less cool just because you don't drink. You're actually wiser. And you know, it's not going to take more than probably a few more decades or like a century more for people on the earth to really understand like cigarettes. Once we're cool, now it's disgusting. And we understand why. Soon on the earth, people are also going to realize the same regarding alcohol. It may take a while, longer, but it will. Spiritually speaking, all the books in Spiritism tell us about what's happening when we're drinking alcohol. From a social drinking moment to heavy drinking, it's all the same. Entities who are surrounding us, they want us to feel less of ourselves, and we start making big mistakes, wrong choices. That's how it goes by. That's the message. As simple as that, if we want to treat ourselves, what do we do? First of all, those who are dependent on it need to understand that the um, World Health Organization states that alcohol is a disease that is progressive and fatal. Okay? Those who are dependent on alcohol have a long journey. So that's the news. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a long, difficult journey, but it's possible. First, the person who is drinking alcohol and dependent on it needs to be aware that it's a disease and have strong will to treat him or herself. Second, need to change the habits that they have. Avoid the very places, environments, and friends with which you used to drink before. Um, Third, don't begin. It's the first sip that escalates in the next one. So don't go with the first one. Find support, psychological, spiritual, physical support. Cultivate prayer and inner vigilance, you know, about what you're feeling because your feelings are bringing you to that scenario. So we need to do deep journey into emotional management and go to the spirit center nearby, receive the spiritual passes, drink the spiritually blessed water, read the spiritist books and the messages, bring the the the, the prayers to your home because those spirits are going to be rescued and do the most good you can to other people. Focus on being charitable. You're going to find new strength to stay strong on your feet, keep walking, and uh, steadily moving forward. So, dear listener, we need the social support to overcome the social tragedies of alcohol. We're going to stop here and invite you for our final prayer. Okay, today the program is very straightforward. It's actually an answer to many emails we have been receiving at Kardec Radio regarding the Spiritist view on social drinking. We hope we have addressed your questions. If not, please write to us at kardecradio at gmail dot com, and we'll elaborate uh, further the the answers to your questions in future programs. Okay, for now we invite you for our final prayer. (music) 
Dear Mother, Father God, we thank you very much for the messages of medicine and spirituality through Spirit of Me. Sharing with us the warnings for a healthier life. May we all be strong and united. May we all stay very faithful to your heart. And in this very prayer, we ask for strength and new hope to all the people who find themselves dependent on alcohol at some point. May they find new help, new strength, new hope. May they find true strength in you. Because we know with you everything is possible. Miracles of life. Feeling the joys of being connected with you. We ask for your blessings to everyone who is listening to us. To the whole world. Thank you. And so be it. So dear listener... In a week from today, we'll have more at Kardec Radio. Beautiful programs for you. You know, we'll have a very beautiful conversation with uh, Stafford Batty, who is a professor in um, California and has read Andre Lewis' books, uh, Kardec's books, and he has written his own books. We're ha- going to have a beautiful conversation on reincarnation. He is an amazing mind, and you're invited to join us. And ask your questions, make your comments, and participate in our program in a week. Meanwhile, tomorrow we have uh, Spiritist Awareness at 8 p.m. Monday, Spiritist uh, uh, Cardiac Radio for Kids. Wednesday, the book The Messengers by Andrea Luis. And on Thursday, Spiritist Talks. So, Cardiac Radio is here for you to nourish your soul always. We wish you lots of blessings, dear listener. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.